Welcome to Statistics in Excel video number 11. Hey, as always, if you want to download this workbook, business210chapter1.xlsm, go to my college website. Hey, in this final video for chapter 1, we have to talk about a few remaining terms. Hey, cross-sectional is one term, and time series. Hey, let's start with time series, and uh, then we'll go back to cross-sectional. Here's a chart. Number of building permits issued in the county of Lucas. Time 1, time 2, time 3, time 4, up, down, up, down. So there it is. Time series is very simple. We have one county, and we're looking at what happens to it over time. This could be stock value, right? January, February, March, and what the stock value did. Time series. Let's compare that to cross-sectional. Here's a bunch of counties at one point in time. Number of building permits. It's still number of building permits, but now we're comparing all these different counties and the number of building permits at one period in time. One county, lots of times. Lots of counties, one time. So that's cross-sectional time series. Let's do an example. Let's make a chart. Hey, sales of organic foods in millions of dollars. Year, 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 year. And stores, Whole Foods, Safeway, and Trader Joe's. Let's highlight this whole range right here. We have some labels here, some labels here, and the intersecting sell as Safeway sales in millions in 2006. I'm going to highlight this whole range, and in 2007, we've got to go to the Insert menu and Charts. We'll do this a lot in this class. And we want to select Line. And let's just select, how about this one? So we have the little uh, uh, data points. And there it is. Very quickly, if I point to the upper edge and then hold Shift, I can click and drag in a little bit, and that'll move the chart proportionally. Sometimes it's tricky to get the chart. You have to see that cursor. That's the Move cursor. Ooh, I still didn't get it. There it goes. Now look at this. Our data was set up correctly, and with charts, as we'll see in Chapter 2, you don't want a lot of chart junk. You don't want a lot of junk on it, but you want to have enough information for them to understand. Hey, do we understand this is in millions of dollars? Yeah, that unit and that M indicates that. These, you might put a label here that says years, but that's pretty obvious. And then there it is. The stores are very clearly labeled there. Wow, look at that. That's different than the time series we looked back here. This was just one element over time, but it's certainly possible to compare one, two, three, or however many over time. Then it's quick and easy to see and compare. I'm going to drag this down, and now I want to do, this is a time series. Now let's do a cross-sectional. I'm going to say for um, Whole Foods, right there. And this one right here, I'm going to hold my Control key, Control, and highlight 6 million, or the, the numbers for 2006. Notice it meets the definition of cross-sectional at one point in time, a number of different elements. Let's, in chapter 00, zero con, um, Alt F1, and this works in 2007, Alt F1. It gives you the default chart. I'm going to point to the upper edge, hold Shift, and click and drag in. Let's see if I can get my move cursor and move this. I'm going to get rid of that since I don't need it. Uh, we do need a label here because this doesn't have enough information. I'm going to go to Layout. This is a context-sensitive ribbon. I'm going to go to Chart Title. I'm going to say Above the Chart. And I'm going to start typing, uh, I think that was 2006. Yeah, 2006. Now I have to click back on the chart. 2006. Notice when you have the uh, label highlighted with a solid line like that, it, as soon as you start typing it, it appears up in the formula bar. Uh, 2006. Enter. Enter. Let's click right here. Oh, there we go. All right, um, we need to talk about uh, two more terms. Since we made our little uh, charts from this raw data, a cross-sectional and a time series. Let's go to our next sheet tab. I'm going to control page down, control page down. I want to go to descriptive statistics, descriptive. And just as we're going to compare our last two uh, terms, inferential and descriptive. Descriptive just says you organize the raw data into some information. It just says, here's what it is. Inferent, and that's what the word describe means. We're just going to describe it. 
inferential means, hey, we're going to use that descriptive statistics and whatever other methods to come to some conclusion, come to some conclusion. And we're going to be using a sample to come to some reasonable conclusion about a population. Let's look at descriptive. There's uh, three types, numerical measures. Simply, we have some cost of parts here and a uh, data set. So we're going to calculate a numerical measure. Here's an example, average. I'm going to click in the top cell and watch this. Since this data set goes way and way down, and I don't, I don't want to click and drag. I can simply click in the top cell and hold Control Shift and Down Arrow. That's a way of immediately telling your cursor for a function to jump all the way down to the bottom. And then I'm going to hit, instead of Enter, or oh, Enter's fine. I could have hit Shift Enter and the cursor would have actually gone up. There it is. That's a numerical uh, measure. That is a typical value. Now, descriptive statistics tabular method. We already saw how to do this with a pivot table. We will learn how to do it in cells without a pivot table. But here it is. Here's the category. Here's some categories, 50 up to 60, but not including, 60 up to 70, but not including. There was 13 in this category. And let's look. In tabular, a lot of times you have the frequency, but you also have percent frequency. Oh. Equals one cell to my left divided by the total. And as we saw in chapter 00, zero videos, we learned how to lock this cell reference using the F4 key. That way, this formula, when you copy it down, will always look one to my left and compare it to the total, which is the definition of percent frequency. I'm going to use hold Control and tap Enter. That's a great keyboard shortcut when you're immediately going to do something to the cell. I'm going to point to the fill handle and click and drag. And there it is. Very quickly, I have my percent frequency. I can click down here and use my keyboard shortcut for auto sum, alt equals, and that will put auto sum and add them up because if it doesn't equal one or a hundred percent, that's a formatted version of number one, then you know you didn't do it right. Uh, let's scroll over here. The third type of <coughs> Descriptive statistics. Oh, graphical method. This is a histogram of the part cost. In chapter two, we'll see how to create this very important statistical uh, chart. Describing, that's all we're doing. Now, inference is statistical inference, creating reasonable estimates from a, sam a sample. Here, what if we took that $79? In our budget projections, we will use an average of $79 to help project future part costs. That's an example of statistical inference. We're going to look at our uh, another example, but first let's define some terms in regards to uh, statistical inference. Control page down to jump to the next sheet tab, inferential statistics terms. Population, a set of all elements of interest in the particular study. That's all of them. Uh, all the people in the United States. Um, so if we do a political sample, we'd go out and say, who are you going to vote for? That would be a sample. That would be a subset of the population based on the whole population of voting adults. Statistical, so Population sample, very important. Here, look at this. I have a short little example here. Population, all students in the class, there they are. And I'm going to hit my F9 key. I have this randomized. And here's a sample. We sampled and got student 1, 9, and 10. If I hit F9 again, I take a new sample. Here's all of them. Here's just a few of them. That's a good visual way to remember population and sample. Statistical inference, the process of using data obtained from a sample to make estimates and test hypotheses about the characteristics of a population. That means we're going to, and we'll see how to do that um, in uh, chapter 9 when we do hypothesis testing. But in general, you take a, a sample about the population and come to some conclusion to help you make some decision. A census is collecting <coughs> data for the population and a sample survey collecting data for a sample. Very quickly, we're running out of time. Let's click on this last sheet time. And we already saw this one just a few videos ago. This is uh, inferential statistics using hypothesis testing. We are sampling to see if the box weight from the manufacturing machine is good enough for us. Is it too much? Is it too little? Or is it just on? If I hit F9 to randomize my sample, as we saw in earlier versions, when the red is on our level of significance, that means the machine is not filling accurately. When I hit the F9 and run another sample, when p-value is 
greater than our risk level than the machine is filling accurately. In example, this is a great example of inferential statistics. All right, see you next video.